Canadians are going to clear. Evans is going to get down there first. The net is empty. Can he tuck it in? He does. Pays a price, but scores the goal. And Shifley flattens Evans, who hasn't got up. What's going on guys? Rob Peasel back with another episode of The Breakdown and very pleased to be joined by the one and only John Shannon. John, thanks for doing this. Rob, pleasure. You know where I'm starting, John. I mean, Montreal took game one over the Winnipeg Jets, but nobody is talking about that. They're talking about what happened in the last minute of the game. Mark Shifley with this hit on Jake Evans. What were your initial thoughts when you saw it? Well, uh, you could see it coming. Um, and and really, you you wondered um, if Evans having to go behind the net would allow a Jets player to come from behind and prevent the empty net goal. What we didn't anticipate was that Mark Shifley would go for the body rather than the puck. I'm one of those guys that uh, I back it up and play it 68 times, Rob, and uh, tried to figure out whether the hit was late, whether it was to the head. Um, you know, what was the damaging part of the blow. Um, and the worst part about it is was that uh, Shafley came from 150 feet. You know, John, you said off the top there that you could see it coming. And I tend to agree. If you were watching that third period and you were just watching Mark Shifley, you saw a player getting more and more frustrated by the minute. And then he finally just kind of blew. You don't get suspended for frustration. Uh, you get uh, you get suspended for actions. One of the key things in all of this is the ability to control your emotions and to control your environment. And obviously, Mark did not do that uh, in game one, and uh, hence he's he's not playing. And and that's that's really the bottom line. It, it it must be terribly frustrating for the Winnipeg Jets when you consider that last year in the bubble in Edmonton. Uh, I thought they had a really good chance. And then Shifley goes down with an injury and they limp themselves through that series against Calgary, uh, but really had given themselves no chance. And now you have to wonder, have they put themselves, has he put them in the same precarious position this year against Montreal? You know, John, when something like this happens, especially in the playoffs, you're inevitably going to hear the word retribution, uh, especially when someone like Joel Edmondson says this post game i mean it was a dirty hit um but the league's going to take care of it and you know if he gets back in the series uh we're going to make his life miserable but you know i think the, the league's going to do a good job with that uh, you know i i think people have i honestly think people have read too much into the edmondson comments because uh i i think it was i think it was corey perry's job to make mark shifley's job miserable last night and he did uh, and I think you can you can take it so many ways, and 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 social media and Zoom calls uh, have made uh, all of these interviews so two dimensional. Um, I, I I mean, Edmondson, they, obviously the players. It's fantastic uh, what 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 the Canadians did right away. The Canadians went in and coached every player what to say. You could every interview that happened after saying, we'll let the league handle it. We'll let the league handle it. We'll let the league handle it. Yeah, we're confident that you're going to take the decision and then make the right decision. We'll let the, the league deal with it. You know, I think the, the league's going to do a good job with that. Brendan Gallagher with Scott Oak was fantastic. Let the league handle it. But, you know, I know Mark and that was brutal. Um, what what Edmonton's, Edmonton said to me was to the line. And I don't think was over because I think you can make a player's life miserable without being a vigilante. Um, so I, I, I didn't, maybe I'm an old school guy. I, I didn't read near as much into it as a lot of people did. I've seen many worse statements made by players after games. I have seen many worse statements by players on the ice. Um, and so I, I think Edmondson was really just saying what a lot of people in the Montreal room were thinking. And I don't, I think he got to the line and I don't think he crossed it. You know, John, a thought occurred to me when I was watching this. And when it did, I was really happy you were gonna be our guest, but you're gonna to have to go through one of your favorite Rob Pizzo long questions. Yeah, yeah. for the record, folks, uh, I always tell uh, Rob, come on, you know, tell, tell me the time, don't build me the watch. <laughs> I don't even wear a watch. Um, this made me think back to the John Tavares Corey Perry incident in round number one. 
If you remember, of course, Tavares had to be taken off in a stretcher and there was a delay of just under eight minutes. And in that time, we saw a really scary hit seven times. And I remember jumping on social media and there were a lot of prominent hockey people saying, stop showing me that replay. Fast forward to this incident with Mark Shifley. And the delay was roughly the same, just under eight minutes. And we only saw three replays this time. I'm not asking you to critique one broadcast versus another, but you've been in that control room millions of times. And I wanna ask you about balance, John, because I understand your job as a producer, as a director, uh, as a broadcast team, is to show people who are watching the game what happened. But these are also human beings who have families who are watching, perhaps even kids. How do you keep that balance between here's what happened and we don't want to show that over and over and over again? It's difficult. It, it's difficult. It, it, it's a team effort. You know, there need to there needs to be a lot of voices to be involved. And I, I'm not talking about just the producer or the director. I'm talking about uh, someone who's that you know, to bring out a parliamentary phrase, a sober second thought to say, okay, we've seen it enough. Um, you know, that's, that's, what a, that's what a production group does as a team. Um, peop, you know, guys on the running video, video replay machines will try to sell you replays all night long because that's their job. Then uh, the, the, the director, the producer, the executive producer, they have to, they have to create the checks and balances uh, whether whether they've done it or not. For the record, I, I thought that uh, the Tavares scenario, from the moment of the hit to the moment that he went off the ice was handled brilliantly. Um, there were two clusters of replays in that, because I again, I did what you did. I went back and I counted the replays and I said, okay, how have, are, are they tastefully showing from a distance what Tavares looked like? How how severe how severe did he look? Uh, I mean, I didn't see I didn't see a picture on television like I saw on the front page of the Toronto Sun. I didn't, and to me that showed a, a little bit of tastefulness within the realm of of the uh, the broadcast. They didn't go to commercial. They could have gone. They're not supposed to go to commercial by the by the you know the unwritten rules of television. Go to commercial after he leaves the ice. Uh, I, I thought it was similar l last night. Um, uh, albeit, I, I, I think we, we, uh, we, we made an assumption, assumptions as viewers last night that Evans wasn't as bad as, um, as Tavares. I, we made that assumption. I'm not sure it was a fair assumption. Um, but I, what I wanted to see really more importantly, because of what's happened in the days following is I wanted to see where did Shifley come from? How long was he on the ice beforehand? And how how hard did he skate from his own defensive zone? I'm not sure I saw that. I mean, have you witnessed battles in the room where maybe one person is saying, hey, keep showing that replay. Someone else is saying, that's enough? Yeah, oh yeah, all the time, all the time. You And again, that's what that's what a dialogue in the, uh, in, in the mobile is all about, is to be able to sit there and say, okay. And, and again, it, it, somebody needs, you know the, the intensity of being in a TV mobile is like, like being in the in the tower at, at Pearson Airport landing airplanes. You are running on adrenaline. You are making snap decisions. Uh, you're not dealing with life and death, but you think you're really darn important. Um, and uh, and and so there's a demand to be quick and great and be right. You really do have to go with your gut, and it takes experience to do that. You need to go with your gut. There are. As, you know, I, I, I teach a little bit at the, at the College of Sports Media, and I, I tell the kids on, on a daily basis that hockey, like most sports, is, a, is an action-reaction sport. So if something happens to the Jets, what happens to Montreal? What happens to Evans? What happens to Shifley? You need to be able to, in your own mind, answer all of those questions in a snap second. And that becomes the real challenge of live television. The guys in the truck are seeing it for the first time too, and that and and that's a challenge. Is oh my God, we can't you know where where do we draw the line? How do we show that? Here's here's the interesting thing, Rob. That that if there were nineteen thousand people at Scotiabank Arena, those nineteen thousand would have seen that. And and so where 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 then do you draw the line between being in a sterile environment 
or one with 19,000 people with their phones out because it's going to be all over social media. Where where do you where do you draw the line with that now? And that become again, that becomes another challenge. You say you saw it on social media. Well, how did that replay? Where did that replay come from? You know, I mean, that becomes something to me of a uh, of another element that we now have to consider within the within the broadcast landscape when we do when we do live sports.